Uh, welcome back to Kato Geospatial Solutions. Uh, so this video is a follow-up to the one uh, in which we learned how to download a topo sheet from the Survey of India website and how to georeference it using the ArcGIS software. Uh, so uh, we're going to learn how uh, we're going to learn how to create some spatial entities like point, line, and polygon features, and how to measure their basic properties like uh, area, distance, and perimeter. Uh, so let me first add the georeference topo sheet. So this is the topo sheet which we gave a that day. So, uh, so in order to uh, find the basic properties like area, distance, and perimeter of the spatial entities which we create, uh, first we have to convert this topo sheet to a projected coordinate system. So as you can see, this uh, topo sheet is in a geographic coordinate system. Uh, the properties are in uh, uh, decimal degrees. It is. Uh, so, uh, so we have to just convert this uh, topo sheet from a GCS to a uh, PCS. So for that first you have to understand where this place is exactly located. So for that uh, uh, let me just zoom into this topo sheet uh, to get an idea about the place which it represents. So the place uh, denotes as uh, Bellari. So this place is somewhere in Karnataka. Uh, so in order to find the uh, UTM zone on which it is falling, uh, all you have to do is that you have to use an application. Uh, so first you have to go to Google. Uh, then you have to type in uh, UTM zone finder. So after typing in, uh, this will lead you to an application named Mango Maps. And using that application, we will be able to find the zone exactly where our place is falling. So you have to click this first link. And then you have to type in the place. Uh, so in this case, the place uh, which you are looking for is Bellari. So Bellari, it is already stating here. Bellari, Karnataka. So as you can see, this place is on 43 yen, on 43 yen. And in case for a better understanding, let me zoom out a bit. Uh, so as you can see, it is exactly in the zone 43 yen. Uh, so in order to convert our topo sheet from a GCS to PCS, you have to go to the ARC toolbox option. And then you have to go to this uh, data management tools. And inside this data management tools, you have to go to this uh, projections and transformations. And inside this uh, raster. Raster for a project raster. So you have to click this tool. Uh, inside this, you have to input this uh, topo sheet. So uh, this topo sheet is obviously in a GCS format. I mean, in a GCS coordinate system. So you have to save this in a proper folder. So I'm going to just save it as uh, topo pcs dot tiff. Coordinate system is called uh, 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 the Desno solid, it is 43 uh, EM. So you have to just input that zone here. So for that, you have to go to this uh, projected coordinate system drop down inside this uh, UTM, uh, the WGS 1984, and then this northern hemisphere uh, since uh, places above the equator. So inside this northern hemisphere, you have to go to this uh, 43 EM zone. You have to search for that. So, for the end zone is here, and it is always a best practice to note this ID number and WK ID number. So, this ID number will be always helpful for us to feed in the coordinates. Uh, for a future reference, it will be very useful for us to uh, enter these coordinates very easily. Uh, so, it is always a best practice to take note of this ID number. So, in this case, for this uh, coordinate system, ID number is 32643. Okay, so please remember that. So after giving this uh, coordinate system, you have to just click OK, and and you can give the rest as it is. Uh, then you have to click OK. As you can see, it has been converted to a uh, uh, PCS. Okay, so now that we have converted the uh, topo sheet into a projected coordinate system, uh, it is better for us to understand the difference between the GCS and the PCS format. Uh, so for that we will uh, we'll just uh, delve into the properties of this topo sheet which is in the uh, GCS format. So for that you have to just right click on this and then go to the properties and you have to just go to this uh, source tab and as you can see from the cell size here it is in exponential format and which clearly states that uh, this topo sheet is in the geometric coordinate system uh, that is it is in the uh, decimal degrees format. And to further reinstate that, you can see the spatial reference here. Uh, spa spatial reference uh, clearly shows that it is in the uh, GCS format. 
and the intrinsic case of this uh, topo sheet which is uh, in the PCS format that is in the projector coding system if you go into the properties of that you can see the cell size here so the cell size is uh, uh, measured in terms of uh, meters and the spatial reference as well is in uh, UTM zone uh, 43 m uh, so that is the difference you have to understand between uh, these two coding systems so now we shall create the spatial entities uh, so for that you have to choose a folder and uh, you have to just uh, right click on that folder to create a new shape file within that so in this case i am choosing this uh, tutorial folder and i am going to create the point line and polygon shape files within this folder uh, so for that to happen i have to just right click on this uh, go to new option and then uh, shape file so uh, you will be getting a dialog box here and in this uh, box you have to just uh, type in the name of the shape file which we are going to create uh, so in this case i am going to give the name as uh, cities uh, since i am going to create a point uh, shape file first uh, so if you say type will be point and then you have to just uh, give in the coordinate system which is nothing but uh, utm zone 43m so for that i have to click edit and at this time uh, the wkd which we noted earlier will come in handy uh, so instead of just navigating through all these uh, links, you can directly type in the uh, WKID code here, uh, which will directly lead you to the desired coordinate system. So uh, we don't know that the uh, WKID code for this uh, UTM zone 43ms uh, 32643. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, type in that and uh, click enter. Uh, so as you can see, it is directly uh, it is directing me towards this uh, coordinate system. So I have to just select it and I have to just click OK and everything else are fine. So it's OK. Uh, so as you can see the uh, series uh, shape file has been created and as soon as we create this uh, shape file it is better for us to create a uh, name field. Uh, so mm -hmm. for that uh, we have to just open the attribute table by right clicking on it. Open attribute table and then uh, go to this uh, table options at, uh, drop down. Uh, where you can see this add field option in this case i'm going to just uh, uh, create a new field um, uh, name so i'm going to give the name and the type will be text type okay uh, so as you can see uh, the new field has been created in the name uh, name uh, so now uh, we have created the name field uh, we can just start to create uh, input features uh, so for that we have to first enable the editing mode so for that uh, have to go to the editing box and click on start editing uh, so as soon as we click the start editing option you can see all these options uh, being enabled uh, so you have to click this last icon named the create features and as soon as we create uh, as soon as we click the create features we will be getting this dialog box here and you have to just click on this uh, CD shape here. As we are going to hit this shape file, you have to just click on this uh, shape file. Uh, so, uh, let me just uh, zoom into this uh, topo shape to get some point features. And just for the sake of time constraints, I am just going to uh, create only two points. As we are going to create a line and a uh, polygon shape file as well. Uh, let me create a point here. And uh, it is always a best practice to uh, type in the name of the point immediately as soon as you, uh, you create a point uh, in order to avoid any further confusion. So for that I will just uh, key the name here. Okay. Then I will go for the second point here. Okay, fine. We created uh, two points, uh, so we can just uh, save the edits now uh, by going to the same option again. Go to editor, save edits, and then stop editing. And, and in case if we want to see the points which we have created, you just uh, go to this table options again and click on this uh, select all option. And then you can just see the points which you have created now. And by clicking on this uh, show selected records. As you can see, we, can, uh, we have created uh, two points here. Now we have to follow the same steps again for the creation of a line feature. As well for that, you have to just right click on the folder in which you have to create the shape file. Right click new shape file. 
and in this case I'm going to give the name as a role and the feature type will be a polyline and the coding system will be uh, UTM zone 43 uh, so for that I have to uh, type in the WKID code 32643 uh, press enter select and click ok ok it has been created now now you have to add the fields in this case you have to add uh, two fields uh, so the first field will be name and the second field will be uh, distance field uh, so using this distance field you will be calculating the length of the road segment which we are going to create uh, so for that I have to open the attribute table by right clicking on this uh, shape file open attribute table table options add field uh, so the first field will be the name field type will be text and the second field uh, will be the uh, distance field and the distance field will be having a, a, a type of uh, float so the type will be float Uh, so after creating uh, these two fields, we, uh, we can start to digitize a uh, particular line feature. So go to editor, start editing. Uh, let me choose a small uh, road segment. I'll choose this particular road, road segment. I have to click on the feature which I have to edit. So in this case, I have to click on the road uh, shape file. So I will start editing. One more important thing to note is that in case if you want your feature to be more accurate and uh, more smoother, then uh, you have to add as many will as possible. Because we have shortage of time here and we are rushing through this process, in case if you want to map it accurately, then you have to add as many vertices as possible to get a smoother and a more accurate uh, feature. Okay, so let me stop uh, to this. Uh, so if you, uh, if you want to finish the sketch then you have to just uh, double click on the last uh, last vertex so in this case uh, since uh, this being the last vertex I have to just double click on this in order to finish the sketch so double click as you can see it has been created now so now I uh, will be giving a name for this feature uh, let me give a simple road uh, road uh, 1 okay. Uh, so after giving the name, I have to just uh, save the edits. So save edits and uh, stop editing. As you can see, we have created the road feature class. So now uh, we just have to calculate the length of this uh, road uh, shape file. Uh, so for that, we have to just uh, right click on this the distance field which you have created and then go to this calculate geometry option. I click yes. As you can see in this property, it is already showing the uh, length. So it will be calculating the length of the segment by default. It will be asking whether uh, we should have the output in terms of meters or uh, any kinds of length units. So uh, in this case, I am going to go with the uh, kilometer option. So uh, after selecting this, I will just click OK. Again, click Yes. So uh, as you can see that the uh, uh, total distance. The total length of this road segment is 1.95 uh, kilometers. In case if you want to round up this uh, decimal places to only 2, then uh, you can directly go to the uh, properties of this field by right clicking on it again. Uh, go to the properties and you can just go to this uh, numeric option and you can just uh, change these values. Uh, right, now it is being right now it is being displayed as uh, 6, so I am going to change it to 2. Uh, so that I will be getting the values of 1.95 kilometers. It is based on your preference. Uh, click OK. As you, can see, as you can see, it has been shortened to 1.96 kilometers. The next step is the creation of a polygon shape file. So uh, let me do it uh, real quick. Uh, so for that, I have to get a shape file here. New shape file. Uh, let me give the name as uh, lake uh, feature it will be polygon 
it depends on which feature you want to digitize. If you want to digitize a forest area, then you can give forest or something like that. In this case, I'm going to digitize a lake feature, so I'm giving the name as lake. Uh, so I'm going to give the uh, coin system as 43N, so 32643, enter, uh, select this and click OK, uh, click OK, it has been created. Now you have to create uh, two new fields, open attribute table, uh, go to add field option, uh, give a name field first, text type, and then uh, add another field name as the name of area, uh, type as float, and then I am going to add another field uh, named perimeter. So, perimeter type the float. Okay, so we have added uh, two more uh, new fields. Uh, let me go to editor and click on start editing. Uh, so, uh, since I am editing the polygon feature class, uh, so I am going to click on this polygon shape file. Uh, let me zoom out a bit. Uh, let me start to detach this lake. Uh, so, I have to click it again. Let me start digitizing. Yeah. I'm rushing it through this for the sake of illustration. So, in case we want to do it perfectly, then we have to invest a lot of time in this. And you have to create more voltages uh, to get uh, to get it mapped accurately. So uh, to finish the polygon, you have to just uh, double click on the uh, point on which you start. So in this case, I have started on this point. Uh, so uh, I have to just double click on the point on which I started. So I have to just double click on the point, and uh, it will be closing the polygon. So as you can see, the polygon is closed. Uh, so now uh, we can just uh, enter the name for this uh, lake. So the name was, I think, uh, Lipura Lake. Okay. Uh, so uh, now we can just uh, save the edits here, and we can stop editing. Uh, so now we can calculate the area and perimeter for this lake. Uh, so for that, it is very simple as the one uh, which we did for the road shape. Uh, go to the area field, right click on it. Calculate geometry, uh, click yes, and it has been already set it as area. So the property is area, it will be automatically calculating area. Uh, so in this case, I am going to go the units uh, square kilometers, uh, click OK, click yes. It has been calculated here, and uh, now I am going to calculate the perimeter for this lake. Uh, right click, calculate geometry, click yes. Uh, so in this case, I am going to change the property to perimeter. And the perimeter will be in the case of uh, uh, meters. And it may keep it in meters itself. So, okay, click yes. So, as you can see, the perimeter is uh, 5157 meters. And the total area is uh, 1.66 square kilometers. Uh, so, with this, you have created the spatial entities and you have just created the spatial measurements uh, for this line and polygon features. So let me zoom out a bit uh, so that we can see all the spatial entities which you have created. Uh, so I will uh, zoom out to the extent of this uh, topo sheet. And I will also disable these two to uh, to have a better look at the uh, shape which you have created. Uh, so as you can see we have created two point features, one line feature and a polygon feature. So in case if you want to stylize these symbols you can just uh, directly go to their uh, symbolic properties. I can just uh, directly click on this and you can uh, alter the uh, symbols like this. You can just increase the thickness of this uh, road by increasing the width, change the color. So polygon also, you can just increase the width. You can also play around with these uh, different colors which I've got. And, and the final step is in case if you want to label these features, you can just uh, directly go to the properties. Uh, for instance, if you want to label these uh, cities which we have created, uh, go to the properties, 
and then go to the uh, labels tab here and then select the uh, inside the field uh, inside the uh, name field here name field here and also you can just uh, play around with these uh, types of uh, types of uh, wordings which you want so uh, I'll keep it as default uh, so I can do uh, the same step for all these uh, you can just go to the root uh, shape file again and then go to the label uh, labels tab uh, change the label field to the name field click ok go to the properties of the lake uh, shape file go to the labels tab uh, change the name field click ok so now we have to just enable the labels now right click uh, label features right click label features right click label features so as you can see we have just uh, sterilized these uh, entities and also we have uh, named to them and labeled to them uh, so with this, uh, we have come to know how to create these spatial entities and how to measure the uh, basic spatial properties like distance, uh, area and perimeter. And I hope uh, this video has been useful for you. So uh, please do uh, support us for many more interesting videos like this. Uh, thank you so much for watching.